Every first Saturday in September is International Vulture Awareness Day. Sadly, vultures are the most threatened group of birds in the world. The hooded vulture, for instance, is a species with two lifestyles. Here in West Africa, it lives near people in towns and villages, while in Southern Africa, it's a bird in the bush and protected areas. How do we protect this unique gift of nature from going into extinction? And joining us to look at this uh, in uh, the news uh, is Dr. Joseph Onodja. He's a director, technical program, Nigerian Conservation Foundation. Thanks for joining us, uh, Dr. Onodja. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Um, interesting conversation here. There's, there's hardly any animal we don't eat in Nigeria. We call them bushmeat. Uh, or are vultures one of those? Yes, yeah, sadly so. Um, some people use them for meat, uh, but uh, what is driving that population down is um, for belief-based use. It is used for traditional medicine in Nigeria. That is what is driving that population. In other areas, it is uh, caused by probably power lines. They collide with power lines, but we don't have those problems. Um, most of our problems is because people use them for um, traditional medicine, and that has driven down their population. Okay, and, and now let's talk about animal conservation culture. We don't have a lot of that here in Nigeria. How do you think we can encourage this? Yeah, that is why a day like this is uh, is normally established, International Vulture Awareness Day. So I'll be able to create that awareness that people will know that we live in the environment not alone. We live with these animals, and nature has put them in place for us to, to play their part, because without them playing their part, we may run into problems. For instance, the vultures are put there, they are known as the um, environmental sanitation officers. So if they are not there, carcasses will be left, and these carcasses will develop uh, different diseases, cholera, botulism, and so on, and even anthrax. And it will come to the human population, and it will affect us, because we will not be able to stand. So these animals have their roles that they play in the environment, and that is why we continue to create awareness, so that people will be aware of it. Uh, some people consider it an elitist um, kind of thing, but no, it's not elitist. In fact, the surge of the different, um, even the pandemics that we're seeing is as a result of our not taking care of the animals in the environment because they are meant to do some work they ought to do. Yes, all right. And, um, you know, it's, it's, can you share a little bit more about the average vulture's lifespan and maybe a little more on its lifestyle also? Well, yeah, the vultures, uh, the vultures can live up to 20, 25 years. And the way it is, you know, if you find a dead carcass, uh, before it starts decomposing, they go in there to clean the carcasses. And you can see the way their head is. Somebody thinks that because their head don't have feathers, that is to allow, that's the, their biology, allows them to, to stick their neck into the carcasses and they are able to clean up uh, the carcasses very cleanly. And then they, are, they do it in such a way that you will not find anything left. So, and when it goes into their system, if they have acidic content in their stomach that is able to digest all of these uh, pathogens without affecting them. And that is why they are very good for them. So they are well adapted and they have a very keen eyesight where they are able to sight um, um, carcasses or dead animals on the ground from far above where they are. In those days when we used to grow up, once you slaughter an animal, the abattoir, or even the neighborhood, when you look up the sky, you see vultures are already circling around. They are soaring and waiting for you to get out of there so that they will go up and clean up the place. So it's very important for us to continue to uh, let people know that when they see their heads without feathers, it's actually meant for them to be able to do what they do and not because they are good for juju or for any of those things. All right, Dr. Noja. Um, share with us, you know, from uh, our concerns, um, what is your projected vulture uh, survival rate for the next decade if things remain uh, the way they are? Well, we have to reverse the trend. If we don't reverse the trend, we may wake up tomorrow and our children will not be able to know vultures. They will, they will just be seeing them and reading them in the books and that will expose us to a lot of pandemics and a lot of diseases. So if we continue at this trajectory, then we may not even find vultures. The hooded vultures, which is very cosmopolitan, those of us growing up, the, food, the, the vulture that you see commonly in towns and around abattoirs is called a hooded vulture. Now, there's what we call the IUCN um, uh, 
conservation status, it used to be least concerned. That means we have a lot of them in the, in the, in the, in the, in the environment. But in five years, I used to lift them from this concern to critically endangered. That is, 95% of their population have been driven down so that if we continue at this trajectory, then they will go into extinction in Nigeria. And we don't want that to happen because that will expose us to rats and dogs going to clean carcasses. I know that rats and dogs normally find their way into the human population easily and will be able to spread the disease. So if we continue at this trajectory, then we will not find uh, vultures. And that is why, as Nigerian Conservation Foundation, we're trying to create this awareness and not just create awareness. We are trying to know the numbers and where they are so that we'll be able to talk with the communities in the importance of uh, of conserving these bird species. It's not just these bird species, but other bird species as well, so that we'll have them in perpetuity in our environment so that we'll continue to play their part. All right, finally, I just want you to, as quickly as possible, share um, how you think this message can be passed, you know, to those who use them for traditional medicine purposes. Um, they may not, you know, really care much about the environment and some of the things that you're saying. Yes, actually, we have, uh, we have done our market surveys. We have gone to meet them. We have even discussed with uh, the traditional healers themselves. And they agree with us that their raw material of their trade is no longer available as it used to. So we are trying to also discuss with them on how to get alternatives to these things and how uh, to change their, their behavior in that sense. I mean, it's not easy to change behavior, but we're trying our best to see what we can do. And we are talking with them both in the southwest here and we're going as far as the north. In fact, my team are currently in the southeast and engaging different stakeholders as well, reaching them one-on-one -on -one and trying to bring them to that awareness so they will know that we are running out of stock of these and it will eventually um, hit us hard. When, for instance, we have this pandemic, and it's, it's, um, it's related to uh, the, the, our interaction with um, the environment and uh, animals. And then if we don't have vultures at all, that will even expose us even more to more deadly, more deadly pandemics in the future. Dr. Onodja, thank you very much for sharing with us and uh, wish you a very interesting um, uh, you know, work saving vultures. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Absolutely. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.